Donald Trump has been dogged by allegations that his campaign has activated America's racist fringe groups. Will you unequivocally condemn David Duke and say that you don't want his vote or that of other white supremacists in this election? You know, I know nothing about David Duke. I know nothing about white supremacists. And so you're asking me a question that I'm supposed to be talking about people that I know nothing about. At a conference in Tennessee, we saw how some of the intellectual leaders of the white nationalist movement are navigating a new and complex political marriage. Welcome to the conference. This is going to be a record turnout. We have the wind in our sails in a way that I think is unlike anything in the last 20 or 30 years. The annual American Renaissance Conference is a kind of safe space for the country's white nationalist elite. This year's event brought together about 300 neo-Nazis, eugenicists, and white nationalists, a 50% increase from last year's attendance. The conference founder and self-proclaimed white advocate, Jared Taylor, urged his guests not to be afraid of saying what they think. The terror of being called racist paralyzes white people. But the hold of this great evil on the minds of whites is loosening. They think it's loosening because Donald Trump's surge to the Republican nomination has given their extreme views a shot at legitimacy. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. We are not a voting bloc uh, at all. Uh, but I, I think we're, what we're seeing is that the alt-right is starting to become an independent intellectual movement, and I think it's becoming a movement that is associated with the Trump phenomenon. Richard Spencer runs the National Policy Institute, a euphemistic name for his white nationalist think tank. I think Donald Trump is an expression of this general angst amongst white people. It's a kind of implicit identity politics. I think that Donald Trump would be a wonderful change in the realm of foreign policy. Let's get out of NATO, let's uh, reach peaceful agreements with Russia. These are things that I've cared about for a long time. The whole Black Lives Matter movement is a pack of lies. A police officer is 19 times more likely to be killed by a black person than an unarmed black is to be killed by a policeman. Donald Trump has not thought through questions of race in any depth at all, so far as I can tell. He just has instincts. His instincts, I'm, I'm guessing, are opposed to having to press one for English when he turns on the telephone. His instincts are against walking into a 7-Eleven and being surrounded by people that he can't understand. His instincts are against walking down a street in New York City and finding more people from Asia or Africa or the Middle East than people of, of, of European origin. When we contacted the Trump campaign for comment, they told us, quote, we are not affiliated with these groups and strongly condemn their message of hate. But Spencer seems confident that his movement can exert quiet influence if they clean up nicely and stay in the background. If I were involved in a Trump campaign, people would say, oh, look, there it is, the smoking gun, you know, racist are behind Trump. I think the Trump movement is a good thing. I want it to succeed. And the way for me to help it succeed is to be distanced from it. Finally, we have someone at a level of politics in the United States who cannot be ignored, who cannot be shut up. My voice can be ignored. Donald Trump's voice cannot. His presidency would certainly be an improvement over anything that I can imagine Hillary Clinton doing. Hillary Clinton will contribute to the continuing dispossession of whites. But Donald Trump, it is conceivable that he will think in terms of what is good for the majority of Americans. And the majority of Americans, after all, are white. <laughs>